Okay, so it's time for my sewing and growing video for November. What I like to do first though is just give you a quick update on the things that I did in October and maybe even September. So my September sewings of calabrese and cauliflowers, those were potted on and they're probably in their final pots. They might need one further potting on before they get planted out in February. My second succession are doing okay. They'll be ready for potting on um, in about I don't know, three or four weeks. Uh, and so my third succession is the one that I'm gonna do uh, in November. The reason I like to do it that way with those three successions and then another one in February is because it gives me a nice staggered harvest. So I start harvesting about April time, cauliflowers and calabrese, and then I get another harvest early May, and then another one mid-May, then another one late May, and then the ones from February come early June. So it just gives me that, through the, through, all through the hungry gap, a nice uh, successional harvest of the flowering brassicas. And of course, we complement that with the June, July sown purple sprouting broccolis. Um, it just makes for a really lovely um, harvest over the hungry gap. So, those are doing well. Uh, the Brighton lettuce, wow, those have grown so unbelievably slowly. So I would say that uh, the Brighton, they look as if they're two weeks old uh, and actually, you know, they're uh, six weeks old or something like that. They're just tiny little plants. I've no idea what's going on with them. Never grown that variety before. Anyway, it's incredibly slow growing. I've planted those into hanging baskets in the polythor. We'll just have to see how they go. I'm not impressed so far. Pretty much all the garlic is in now. I've just got two beds to um, interplant into, uh, both strawberry beds, I think. Um, and we're actually waiting for those garlic to arrive from the supplier. The fill basket Brussels sprouts, which I grow for a leaf crop in May, June and July, and I love them for that because we love the sprout leaves. They have not grown well at all. Again, I think I'm just using old seeds there. They just have no vigor. They're, I don't know what's happened to them really. That you know, the, the plants are tiny by comparison with the calabrese and things that are, you know, huge baby plants now. So I've got some new seeds. I'm gonna sow those. I'll see how they go. Um, broad beans, those are just ready for planting. In fact, they were ready for planting about a week ago, but it's just not been good weather for planting. I'm gonna split that planting. Six are going in the polytunnel for a really early harvest. 18 are going outside. I'll have another batch started in November and then another batch started in February. So that'll give us again a nice successional harvest. And actually by the time those broad beans, that second succession of broad beans are ready, we normally have French beans and runner beans in the polytunnel, so, and peas actually, so we're not kind of short of the legumes. Uh, talking of legumes, the pea uh, microgreens, or pea shoots really, uh, those are ready, we've had a few cuts off those, and all of the green garlic is planted. And then finally, right at the end of October, I sowed three tubs of Napoli carrots, and those are for a harvest in May. So everything we're gonna eat between now and the end of April uh, is in the ground, um, and it holds perfectly well in the ground, it's really great, uh, but a little bit beyond that and it'll start to go to seed, and so it's nice to have these plants, they hopefully won't go to seed, only if maybe five, 10% of them will. Um, to give us that nice early harvest. That'll see us through May uh, and early June, and then our early sowing in March should be ready. So that is October. Let's take a look at November. Now there's very little that I recommend sowing in November without grow lights. I'll tell you the things that we're doing with grow lights. Um, and yeah, and it's the same for December. You know, basically there's nothing, I don't think, that we will sow in December that won't go under grow lights. So really, if you're not doing grow lights, 
there's only two things I think on this list that you can do. First one is carrots and they have to go in a greenhouse or a polytunnel or something like that. And I'm doing Marion is the variety and I'm going to do three big tubs of those. And as I say, those are for a harvest in May and early June. They won't stay in the polytunnel for the whole of their lives. They'll stay in there until about April time. Then about, two, about half of them will be left in the polytunnel. They'll be the first to come ready. And then the other three tubs will go up on top of my IBC containers out of the way of the carrot fly. So that's my plan for those. And what else is on? And then, so the next one you can do without grow lights are broad beans. You can either plant those in the ground or modules. I'm doing them in modules because of mice. Um, and it just, I think it's a bit more reliable as a way to get them started. Um, and then I'm doing four different varieties of lettuce. Now these are my four favorite spring varieties. And by starting them now, I get them in sort of middle of April time, maybe a little bit before then. So really nice and early. And of course, I've got loads and loads of lettuce uh, in the ground at the moment. I've got some in the polytunnel. I've got some under low tunnels. Um, but what I like to do is I like to start clearing those winter lettuces in the period sort of late mid to late February through until April and then these, these new spring lettuces come on stream uh, and that just gives me a nicer array of different varieties in spring. Uh, a bit of lettuce connoisseurs in our family, we get through a huge number of them. So I'm doing Reese Rickia, I can't pronounce these very well, um, Grenoble Red, Canasta and Navara and none of these apart from Grenoble Red do particularly well over winter so that's why they're nice to get as early as possible in spring. Um, more pea shoots as I mentioned I need to get some more of those um, Brussels sprouts sown from the new seed packet and then my last sowing of Calabrese as I said those are the ones that are going to come in late May. And the next sowing of Calabrese will be in February for early June. So that is it. It is not a very long list this uh, this time. Um, I really, you know, I don't recommend, let's say, unless you've got grow lights, sowing anything really at this time of year. Um, and as I said, I did promise I would give advance notice of what to sow in December. And again, if you haven't got grow lights, don't sow anything. You could do a few, you can do a few things, consider doing a few things. You could start some spring onions uh, that you could interplant into uh, lettuce beds and things like that um, come sort of February time. Um, and you could probably, again, do some lettuces for an early start if you didn't do them in December, but again, only if you've got grow lights. So very little really to do in December. It's nice just to have a rest. And the other advantage I think is that if you've got any pests in your growing, in your seedling starting space, like whitefly, because right now this time of year, we have whitefly everywhere. It's been the worst whitefly year I can remember in my six years of gardening is not a particularly long period of time but um, anyway it's the worst I can remember and so everything's got a little tiny bit of white fly even in the conservatory there's a little bit of white fly on a few things not very much it's not much of an issue but it's really useful to kind of fire break it and get everything living out of my grow light areas um, for pretty much all of December and most of January and then that all kind of dies off then and so when i'm starting then the tomatoes and the peppers and you know all the masses of stuff that you start in sort of february time uh hopefully it's all starting without any white fly on it at seedling time you might get it when it goes out in the garden of course but at least you're giving it a bit of a start so that's what i like to do just have a bit of a rest in december do a bit of planning do a bit of writing and of course We've got masses of stuff in the ground for harvesting, so we'll still be 
harvesting. In fact, I've just finished the harvest with Debbie just now, and uh, it was quite a nice one. It's kind of our harvest minimum right now. Um, things start to pick up, and it's so low, really, because we've cleared so many beds to replant with stuff for winter that in autumn, we just don't have that much, you know, because as I say, we're really focused on having enough in winter at the moment. Uh, and we just muddle through um, this period. And it's only a period of about two weeks when, you know, things just dip a little bit lower than we used to. And then they kind of build up uh, over winter. Um, and then we start to get back into abundance in kind of March time. But uh, it works okay. My name's Steve. This is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel. And I'll see you soon.